Hello, Facebook land. Yes, I am not a disembodied voice as I usually am. Uh, this is what I actually look like. And uh, this is Myra Jolivet, who's our guest today. Hello. Hello, everybody. Now, Myra, you don't realize this, but you might want to know who's watching. Okay. Okay, so I have all my little friends from Strollers. Uh, in South Brooklyn, you know, Sandy Trombetta. Awesome. I love Brooklyn. Steve Finocchio, you know, <laughs> Joey, Bro Joey, Joey Scatino. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah. then I got all my little friends from uh, students uh, from Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. Wow. Joey Bracco, Joey Scatino, Joey Ferrillo, wow. Joey Matricola, Joey Esposito. We had one girl, Joanne Fitzsimmons. Got too many our, Joey's going uh, on. Our Italian mother married an Irishman. I don't know what she was thinking. <laughs> Uh, and as you can tell, we're sitting here in the middle of gale winds at yes. uh, Inglenook Winery. Yeah. We're sitting in front of a retaining wall built in 1887 nice. at one of the premier Cabernet Sauvignon houses in uh, Napa Valley. Uh, so uh, that's where we are. And, and then, of course, there's all my uh, Irish friends from Bishop Ford High School, Mulligan, Sheedy's, McLaughlin's, and all those guys who nice. def they definitely got me in trouble in high school. <laughs> As a matter of fact, today Robert Conrad died. Uh, uh, I saw that. Yeah, Wild Wild West. We used to watch that. Well, yeah. I, I used to watch that before I went out on Friday night to get like all jacked up for yeah. wrecking havoc in all the bars in well, Bay Ridge. And you saw Orson Bean. Got yeah, awesome. hit by car, and then Kirk Douglas a few days. It's been ago. a rough week. It's, it's a rough week for the greats. It's been a rough well, week. The ones we grew up on. That's right. That's and then, right. and then we, uh, and then we also have my uh, friends from Hunter College watching. Where, uh, in addition to the Joeys from Sacred Hearts and the McLaughlins from uh, Bishop Ford, that was my first encounter with guys named Joel and Ira. Ah. And they weren't Irish or Italian. Nah, 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 nah. nah. But they were always leading the revolution. Ah, now were they near Long Island or anywhere? Uh, they were uh, <laughs> in Long Island and Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, Manhattan, Staten Island. Yeah. Mostly Brooklyn and the Bronx, I think. Wonderful. And Wonderful. then, of course, uh, I've got all my dear cousins in Naples, Italy watching. Oh, I love Italy. And uh, I've got all my dear cousins on my mother's side from Brooklyn and Long Island. Mm -hmm. And then I've got all my realtor colleagues, and actually, uh, everybody, today's subject is going to be geared towards organized real estate and my realtor colleagues, because Myra and I are going to talk about uh, public relations, uh, uh, strategic communications in this uh, very difficult world that we're dealing with. Uh, and uh, and uh, then, uh, again, uh, there's a variety of other people. So, Myra, let's start off like this. Uh, okay. Tell me about your background in the communications world. Well, I am so impressed with all of this that you're doing. I never was good at the technical. Um, in 1977, I had my first job in broadcast television. And for many, many years after that, that was I majored in radio and television broadcasting. So my career... I thought for the rest of my life was going to be television news and so for many years I was a reporter and anchor at four or five different TV stations in Houston and no no all over uh, different places mm -hmm. I also worked for a news service out of DC I worked for uh, Houston was the CBS station so I did some projects with Dan Rather and things like that um, but the way that life you know my career kind of took these kind of crooked paths I didn't have a straight A to Z kind of thing. So when I was going through my divorce, I couldn't accept jobs outside of Houston. I was offered a job by CNN, I was offered some other things, but I had to stay with the kids. We were in a custody battle, which everybody didn't want to know about that, but right. the point... So you're single now? Yeah, I've been single. You're yeah, single now. yeah, I'm single so, now. So I, I have a recommendation <laughs> for you, Myra. I have a recommendation <laughs> for you. What's that? Yeah, you need somebody in the 90-90-90 club. Are you familiar with the 90-90-90? No, what's that? The 90-90-90 club. Please, if any of you are watching, please call. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Maureen, I don't know. You could be interested in this. Uh, uh, it, I, we have Chef Andrea watching here today. He makes great pignoli oh, cookies. Oh, nice. If you need any catering, call Chef Love Andrea. Chefs. But Love the 909090 Club. Okay, so, wow. so wow. here's the 9090. Everybody, Myra is single, 909090 Club. <laughs> if there are any applicants out there, okay, in order to qualify for the 909090 Club, you're going to have to screen through me and my wife, Alan, okay? Oh, you have to be. Here's the requirements. You, you guys are tough. Here's the requirements. 90 years old, 90 million in the bank, 90 minutes to live. 
<laughs> Get that cardiogram. Hand that cardiogram in. Um, so so the, the short story is that, yes. um, so, okay, so I'm on this whole thing of television news, and I did a lot of stuff. I did stuff for CBS. TV. I did a lot of things in TV, mm-hmm. interviewed a lot of people, presidents, blah, 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 you name it. Uh, crooks, you know, murderers, everything in between. So my first time out of television, the mayor of Houston called and said, I need somebody on my staff who knows news. And so I became that person, you know, contributing to the other staff, of course. And so that was my first foray out of a newsroom. I'd never mm-hmm. worked anywhere else. I'd been in a newsroom since I was 19 years old. Mm-hmm. And so um, she taught me political strategy. She taught me um, how to, like, it was, it was the other way around. That got me ready for public relations. So when you go to a news story, you're surveying everything, right? You're looking at everything. Mm-hmm. You're talking to people. You put all that information together and boom, boom, boom. It's a two-minute story or a minute and a half. You take all that and you try to get the hop. When you're doing the public relations thing, you're thinking in terms of the story first. And then you say, how can I build that story? How can I build the facts to pitch that? You're the reporter. I come to you. So guess yeah. what? I have this element, this element, this element, and I think it's going to be a great story for you. Very good. Yeah. So let's so, talk, right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about real estate. I was just in my uh, uh, at my California Association of Realtors winter business meetings down in Anaheim, and where we do our best conversations is with our little subgroup of the California Association of Realtors Cigar Group. Oh, okay. nice. And uh, mostly from Southern California. And uh, fortunately, when I was president of the San Jose Real Estate Board in 1990. Uh, we had uh, lots of paid staff, lots of budget, uh, and I had Mickey Constantino as president two years before me who really established the San Jose Real Estate Board as a go-to source for the media for real estate news. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had retained a publicist for 10 years uh, before I was president in 1990. Wise, and yeah. we used to issue... Uh, uh, press releases uh, once a week uh, through PR Newswire. Yep. Uh, can you tell uh, the audience, especially the realtors, especially the association executives, mm-hmm. especially the presidents, especially the incoming presidents, on uh, what is PR Newswire, what is the value of PR Newswire, and how does PR Newswire help not only for organized real estate, but any business that's looking to issue press releases and right. get its message out? So PR Newswire, Business Wire, those kinds of wire services, you'll notice that they appear not necessarily as news stories Mm -hmm. because you pay for them. But what they do, they bring you a good internet presence. So you get that SEO, you're searchable and all of that. And they also go to the assignment editors at the TV stations and the radios, right? And they do. They, it's, it's, it's a different classification. So in PR you have earned media, which you don't pay for. Well, that's the kind I like. That well, that's the one you don't pay for, but that's the one you got to talk your way in. Right. That's the one where you have to say, "This story is great. I promise you, you're gonna love this. I got all the elements. I got this, this, this. Great interview. That's the story you have to pitch." So, so if you have a good byline and a good subject and good distribution, and you're available, right? Does that qualify for a good story? It it can qualify. The subject matter has to be something that's enticing unique or it's something that the, it's source work that a reporter really wants to know. Now the, the thing with real estate stats that I found because now Bob Hale introduced me to this real estate service. Bob Hale world. while she's dropping names <laughs> Bob, Bob Hale is the chief executive officer Houston. Of the Houston Association yes, of Realtors. Yes, I met him before I came yeah. back home because I'm a California right. native, but I was there for jobs. Uh, but, uh, but uh, you know, in Brooklyn, it's Bob Hale. In Texas and the rest of the South, it turns into three syllables, Bob Hale. <laughs> Bob Hale. <laughs> well, Bob recruited me from politics mm-hmm. and really taught me, because I had done PR for, but at that by that time, I had done PR for corporations, for big oil for healthcare, for this and that. And it was pretty cut and dry, you know. We got a new product, we got a new this, we're doing that. But I couldn't understand, well, what am I gonna do for a real estate services organization? So that's when he taught me, hello, here's what we want. We want realtors to be the highlight, the voice and face of property information in our market. So I can process that. I said, oh, okay, so we're showcasing realtors as the experts. 
And so, and I carried that on. I was working at PacWest, as you know, in Southern California, mm -hmm. and I did that. And so, for those who are in real estate watching, it's just what John said. To become that source, you have to be reliable, available. You know, you can't call and then say, well, I can't really talk to you. The life of a reporter is such that they don't have office jobs just like you guys don't. Mm -hmm. They're out gathering stuff all day on very tight deadlines, and they have to pull it all together in a matter of a couple of hours. So if I call you and you say, well, I can't talk to you right now, you have basically ruined my day. <laughs> so, so, let, so let's talk about that, Myra. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So when I was president of the San Jose Real Estate Board in 1990, uh, we had our 52 press releases choreographed for the whole year. That's perfect. We knew what day we were sending them on, out on. We knew what hour we were sending them out on. We knew that we were referring the uh, reporters to our communications person yeah. who was at her desk. To coordinate it. To coordinate it. Because we, you know, we didn't want to call in a realtor. We'd be in a listing appointment or in a showing exactly. or what have you. Exactly. Uh, and then... She would find the president or the president-elect or the vice president or yes, the treasurer or the right. secretary. There that's was a little pecking order. And you got to know your talking points. Yes. When they call you, you got to know what you... You cannot be salesy. Oh, you, God, no. You cannot be self-serving. And in my personal uh, experience, uh, what I tried to do was to be empowering mm -hmm. to all of our separate audiences. Now, as a board president... Mm -hmm. You have several different audiences, That's and right. and please listen to this uh, uh, organized real estate leadership. Uh, I think your first audience is your members. You know, propping them up. You know, making them feel more exactly. optimistic, less de uh, uh, demoralized. Your second public is your staff. Yeah. You know, they got to feel like they're working for a reason. Right. Right. Uh, your third public are the clients, the general public, and potential clients, and potential clients, That's it. and then uh, politicians. Yeah. You yeah. know, so uh, can you elaborate on your point well, of view on that? And you know, in several scenarios, I've done media training in realtor associations, many that I didn't even work for. I was just kind of rented out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's exactly what I would talk to the board members and the leadership about. Look at the reporter as a vehicle. And even in general media training, when we train politicians and CEOs, the reporter is your tool to talk to those audiences. So it's not about you and that reporter. It is about you being reliable and saying things that are very usable. And that's what we would practice. How do you create a soundbite that is effective and that has a 90% chance of being used? Because when you put all that faldy raw in there to use an old fashioned word, it's too much in the editing process. Right. It's too much to edit through, and it makes you a very difficult interview. You have to be succinct. Succinct. You have to be confident. That's right. Uh, you have to have conviction. That's right. And and by the way, there is no such thing as they took me out of context. No. Everything that you say has to stand on its own it's merits. It's on you. It's on you. Because you have. that's the part that you focus on. You have to focus on what is my message because you already should have practiced. You know, I did this with the mayor. Before we did a press conference, we would sit in a room and I would drill the heck out of her. Blah, 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 and boom, boom, boom. And then just be like, okay, we're ready. Practicing. Everything that's performance-oriented, practice. You know, when I was doing live shots, I, I was anchoring. I was on live TV every day. Do you know I stood in the mirror before the newscast? And I had done it for more than a decade, but I never felt that I should not practice. Practice. If you're going to talk to a reporter, grab somebody in the hallway and say, hey, throw me some questions. <laughs> <laughs> just just toss, you know, bring it to me so that you can practice and feel like you're on your game. So let me go there for a minute. I recommend, I don't know how you're going to feel about this, mm -hmm. but I highly recommend that as soon as you're finished watching this uh, vlog, uh, you Google or Bing or whatever search engine you use, Toastmasters. And you go into your local Toastmasters mm -hmm. and find one uh, Toastmasters group that has a good sense of humor, meets in a location and a time that's good for you. Toastmasters is there to help you improve your public speaking abilities, mm -hmm. your extemporaneous speaking abilities. Are you familiar with Toastmasters? I am. Um, I had, because I was on the broadcast track, our training was much more intense. Yes. And so mm -hmm. even after, it, we would go to what we called anchor school. And so, and then as um, 
as a person on television, we'd go out and do speeches. And so we had training specific to the broadcast community. So I never went to Toastmasters because I grew up and I was born right. in that environment. Yeah. But um, one thing that I think we all agree on is don't ever be ashamed of practicing right. because it's all about how you present. And if you're in leadership, you want to make sure that you present your best self. You always want to be ready when you have that opportunity. Here's a thing that a lot of times people don't know. Let's take a 30-minute newscast. And mostly they're an hour now, but you can do the math. Basically, the construct of a 30-minute television newscast has 9 to 12 minutes of news. You take out the commercials that pay everybody's salaries. You take out the happy talk. You take out sports weather and all that other business. <laughs> I love that happy talk. That's right. <laughs> so when you are presenting or you have your staff going to a television station or with newspaper, I mean, they every morning, they're outlining those columns. They know what they want to put in there. So when I call you, the media person, I'm asking you for free time. Mm -hmm. There's only nine minutes. So that lets you know right there, you better have some meat on the bone. Or if it's a feature story, it's, as they say in Oakland, hella funny. It has to be <laughs> something that's really outstanding because guess what that producer has? That producer has nine minutes. Mm -hmm. And you're asking for a minute and a half of them. That's a lot. Right. And so they're like, is John worth that? <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to be compelling. <laughs> yes. uh, you've got to be professional. You've got to be convincing. Yes. And it doesn't hurt to have some humorous sound bites in there too. Exactly, exactly. And you know the strategies for communication are not just media. You know, you guys in leadership have constituencies. It may not be like when I worked for candidates. It may not be well, we have this group and that group and the union and the non-union and the this and the that. We may not have all those. But even within every industry, there are constituencies. And so it's a little bit of what you said, but it also it focuses on your various publics. And definitely um, your membership, your staff, you know, all of those, there are strategies and communications tools for that. You know, hopefully you have regular communications. Instagram, your newsletter, um, your Facebook site where you're constantly doing engagement. Ask questions on your social media. Don't just put stuff out there. Get people talking. Get them putting pictures of themselves. Having the engagement. So this, this, the communication strategies really, especially nowadays, with so many things and so many ways to communicate, there's a lot that is worth looking into to build your communities, not just media. So let's go there. So I find that uh, there's a lot of real estate boards that do not have a uh, communications director. They're they're too thin. Yeah. Uh, of course, most businesses don't have a communications director. Yeah. The larger companies, though, have, yeah. have layers and layers and layers. Right, but yeah. a lot of the smaller ones don't. Yeah. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, I did retain a publicist, and I was their favorite client because they would say, uh, "We have an interview at three o'clock in the morning at some podunk <laughs> uh, radio station, you know, with you know five hundred watts or whatever the hell it was." Right. And I say, "No problem, I'm there." They go, "Really?" See. I go, "I'm there." But let me tell you what would happen. Great. I'd go down there, and they didn't have a lot of pressure on their time, so I'd do one, two, three hours on the radio live. Oh my goodness! Okay, and guess yeah. and guess what would happen the following day? What's that? They would syndicate it, and I'd get calls from ABC, CBS, NBC, the Wall Street Journal, awesome. the uh, USA Today. Yeah. So if you do a good job, if That's you're right. convincing, if you're right. genuine, if you're genuine. authentic. Yes. Uh, then what happens is it goes viral, and you're not doing anything for the next three days. That's right. Then fielding calls, and this is all organic. That's right. There's no paid advertising. That's so, right. That's so right. let's talk a little bit. You know, I noticed uh, Jerry Poolholes was looking in. Tom Huntley is a, uh, a lender. Ah. Uh, so if uh, uh, you're going to hire somebody such as yourself uh -huh. for uh, strategic communications, the, right. the kinds of things we're talking about, right. uh, maybe having some budget for PR Newswire, uh, sending out regular press releases, et cetera, right. et cetera. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that dynamic works. How many hours do they really need to maintain and in, in, uh, yeah. uh, retain, I should say, retain a corporate right. communications consultant right. per month? W what can happen and what kind of return can you get on investment? Because I remember 
uh, when I was doing uh, public relations, I don't, I couldn't even count the amount of airtime I was getting in terms of what the value was. Exactly, exactly. So, so tell us about so that. So there's several things there. Okay, now when you talk about getting a communications professional, I think what you want to look for is what kind of media plan. So what you want them to do is to learn the culture of your organization in that initial meeting. Learn what your goals are. Be clear on your goals. Do you want to be in the Wall Street Journal? You know, I was I was with the largest PR firm in the world, headquartered in Manhattan, by the way. I worked for them uh, in the 90s. And one thing that we would go into these major companies and we would want to get clear, what are your goals? So if we had a CEO who said, I want to be in the Wall Street Journal, we'd say, okay, that's going to take about eight months because that space in the Wall Street Journal at that time is about $250,000 and you want it for free. We're going to have to work on that. <laughs> We're going to strategize for that. It but it's a, a lot up. easier getting into the San Francisco Chronicle, <laughs> well, yes. the Mercury News, well, exactly. the Contra Costa and, Times. Well, and see, that's the thing. What in your market do you value? And then what are your social media goals as well? You know, do you want to build communities outside of your community? Do you want to have some? Get clear on those things. So when you meet with that media person, of course, they can. you can budget for PR Newswire. That's an easy call. But can they write you a media plan that right. goes with your goals? It, That's you need, what you You need both. You need the you distribution. Need both. That's right. But you need the strategy. So let's talk about some uh, talking points uh, that are prevalent uh, today. Uh, let's go uh, start to finish. Uh, you know, right now, I think what I was looking at the Santa Clara County Association of Realtors and MLSListings.com, of which Myra was the communications uh, director there, right? Yeah, public affairs and uh, a number of other things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I saw at the end of uh, December we had 400 listings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, of course, there's transfer of uh, property tax. Prop yes. 60, Prop 90. Right, right. Uh, there's huge taxes that people pay. Yep. There's tools uh, that uh, are available to uh, defer or avoid the taxes, like 1031 exchanges mm -hmm. and installment sales. So uh, there's lifestyle issues of uh, all of these baby boomers that own properties that are one, two, three, four million dollars. Right. They bought them for sixty thousand dollars yep. thirty-five years ago. Right. They've got millions of dollars of accumulated equity. Maybe they're a little light on their retirement. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we've got the idea of reverse mortgages where you could pull cash out and build an accessory dwelling unit and a junior accessory dwelling unit, eliminate, right. eliminate a monthly payment and generate $60,000 a year in income. So if you were going to uh, design a, corporate, a strategic communications campaign, watch out, the trees are attacking <laughs> <The> us. <laughs> Here we are. You know, everything you hit on is a really good point. And, and let me say why. Because, you know, the world has changed with Zillow and with, let's put it this way. Real estate stats are being done by, can we say everybody? They're being done by Zillow. Yeah, They're Corfax, being done by CoreLogic. Trulia. They're being done by Trulia. Real estate stats for a news person come from everywhere. Counties, cities, everybody's reporting that out. But the things that you mentioned, that's where you can showcase that expertise. I mean, you know, most of us have just been customers on the real estate side. You know, I've had five transactions in my lifetime, but could I do any of what you do? Not at all, mm -hmm. not, not a wing and a prayer. I couldn't begin to handle that. And so that's the expertise to showcase because the public wants to hear that. Think about it, when you see doctors on television, they're sharing something that is not readily accessible to the average person. And that's what real estate professionals want to do as well. That's what lawyers are doing when they're on television. They're sharing that inside information or that, hey, need to know kind of thing. And so I would say, yeah, it's good to push the stats out there. I don't know if that would be my first tier priority. I would come up with those consumer oriented tools, tools and facts that show that you guys are the experts. Right. I would go that way with that. Right. So uh, for those of you out there uh, that are thinking about hiring a strategic communications consultant for your real estate business, for your real estate board, for your other kind of business, uh, uh, you can find Myra on Facebook. We're on Facebook right now. That's Myra, nice. M-Y-R-A. Mm -hmm. Jolie, Jolivet. 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 You say it much better than I Jol <laughs> Say that again. Jolivet. 
Oh, <laughs> oh, you drive that's me a, crazy when well, you talk French. You, you had the Italian names. <laughs> that's a good Creole name, chef. <laughs> yeah, my parents were Louisiana Creoles. There you go. And Catholic. Everybody was Catholic. Very Everybody good. Yeah. The, the parishes. The parishes. The parishes. So you could right. find her there. Uh, what's your email address, uh, Myra? Myra, Myra. This is the easy one. It, Myra, Myra973 at gmail.com. So Myra, Myra973. At okay, as you can see, when Myra and I get together, That's there's crazy. a lot of those uncomfortable pregnant pauses in the conversation. <laughs> you might be wondering, when do those two breathe? <laughs> <laughs> so let's go with a little shift here. Let's go okay. with a little shift. Corporate right. communications, this is all great stuff, but there's more to Myra and I. I am Neapolitan, Myra is Creole, and so I got to ask you other questions here, Myra. Oh, of course, of okay, course. I need a good recipe for red beans and rice. Oh, my goodness. I need a good recipe for red okay. beans and rice. Okay, let me tell you the secret. Okay. First off, Louisiana people have different beans. They're camellia beans. Camellia beans. Camellia. Are they they're, white? Are they black? They're brown? They're red beans. Red beans. And what happens is the way they cook down, they make the gravy. Because the way Creoles make red beans and rice, the beans make a gravy mm. that hugs your rice. And so, you know, anything that we cook, we're going to take out the Holy Trinity. You know, we're going to begin cutting up the celery, the bell pepper, the onion. And, of course, for us, it's also garlic, fresh thyme if you have it. you got to use thyme if you're cooking Cajun and Creole. Let me just say, you got to have thyme. That's an important herb for us. And then we put a little... On oregano. multiple levels, you have to have time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's exactly right. It takes patience. And then bay leaf. You throw a few bay leaves in there. But the main thing is that they cook evenly and that they cook at a very slow rate because they have to make the gravy. That's real red beans and rice. Now, are we doing plant-based? Are we doing ham hocks? Or well, what are we doing see, here? here's the thing. Because I became vegetarian about 20 years ago, I've been changing the recipes but the way that my mom and my aunts used to make them is sm smoked pork neck bones for flavoring see ham hocks to me were a more mississippi okay. alabama kind of thing yeah so but with the southern louisiana people smoked pork neck bones that are sold in the store and they would season with that so, and then add the sausage. The andouille sausage is added later. Okay, so are we taking the meat and sautéing it first, then reserving it, doing the Holy Trinity? No, that, that smoked pork, you buy it already smoked. Okay. So that's strictly a seasoning. Now, there are two ways. Some people put the Trinity in first with a tiny bit of oil. But the way my family did it, they started the beans first, never putting the salt till the end because it makes the beans tough. Okay. And then you put your trinity in after about an hour, two hours. So you saute that in another yeah. pan or you just throw them right in? You just throw them right in there. You don't have to cook. saute them. You don't have to saute that. And then your smoked pork is in there because it's Oh, I like cooked. that. That's easy. But you cook the rice separately. The rice is cooked separately. And what kind of rice do you use? We use, now I use brown rice. But back in the day, it was always white rice and always cooked with a broth of some sort. You know, like a chicken broth if you eat meat, or vegetable a vegetable broth, broth yeah. or whatever. You try not to cook your rice in just water. Yeah. And it's seasoned. See, we season our rice. I've had friends say to me, I could eat the rice as a meal. Right. <laughs> but right. that's what we do. We put green onions in there. We chop some garlic. And the rice, is it has its own flavor. Now, now uh, <laughs> in celebration of uh, Myra's uh, Southern Louisiana Creole roots, I'm going to tell one of the few... Uh, Boudreaux, the Gaston, Boudreaux. <laughs> Thibodeau jokes that I can tell on the open airwaves. Okay. okay. I, you know, right. I, I, I'm not feeling risque enough to, <laughs> no, 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 to no, no, do no. some of the other. Okay, so Boudreaux, Boudreaux goes out fishing in the bayou in his boat yeah. and dies. Oh. And dies. He's in his Piro boat. It's a Piro it, boat, Shaq. Oh, it's a Piro oh, boat. Oh, it's a Piro, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for embellishing. <laughs> okay, you guys, I ain't going to try to <laughs> embellish. I'll let her do the embellishment. <laughs> so, um, uh, what's Mrs. Uh, uh, Boudreaux's first name, by the way? Maori. Maori. <laughs> so, Maori <laughs> Boudreaux calls the Times Picayune. Oh. The Times Picayune. And she uh, calls in uh, an obituary. Mm. And at times, Picayune sees the obituary, and they call her, and they go, Mrs. Boudreaux, you got 11 more letters in your obituary. 
uh, you know, if you add to them, we can uh, still get it into evening edition. So she goes, okay. So she adds a, a couple of things to the obituary, and the evening edition comes out, and uh, it reads, today, Boudreaux went out in his, what kind of boat? Piro. Piro boat, and died. Boat for sale. <laughs> 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 that's perfect. That's, re- that's perfect. That's pretty clean. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's the problem. I don't know the clean ones. There's, <laughs> there's one that I'm going to botch, oh, but yeah, it's, but it's Boudreau and Marie. Boudreaux and Marie. so they're one night they're talking and Boudreau says, Marie, Marie, if I die, you think you're going to get another man? And she said, uh, I guess I probably will. And is that man going to sleep in this bed? I think he will. Is that man going to use my shaving things and all of that that I leave here? Yeah, I think he will. And will that man drive my truck? Oh, no, Cher. He can't drive a stick. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. So, uh, anyway, I suspect that this may not be the uh, last uh, uh, video blog that we do with Myra. But as you can see, we got other fish to fry, so to speak. <laughs> there you go. You know, and we're drinking. Uh, oh. This is uh, 2012 yeah. uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. That's right. And for those of you that haven't heard this little narrative, we're at uh, Inglenook Winery, Captain uh, Gustav Niebaum, uh, with his, the riches that he gained from uh, pelt trade that he had in Alaska, Canada, and the west coast of the United States. Uh, had uh, ten million dollars when uh, the United States bought Alaska from Russia for seven million dollars. So he decided he wanted to make uh, wine, and he bought this property here. I think it's two hundred and thirty acres, uh, mostly uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, but they also make Syrah and Sauvignon Blanc and uh, Zimmendel. Uh, and uh, in 1887, it uh, went into operation. Uh, and um, in the year 1999, uh, to celebrate the millennium, uh, Wine Spectator came out with the case of the century, and the only 100-point wine in the case of the century was Ingle Nook's uh, 1941 Cabernet Sauvignon, wow. that, that version of this. Wow. Uh, That's and, awesome. And uh, I, I have uh, an Excelsior membership here where I buy a certain amount of wine every year, and I wind up hanging out here like every other day. It's, it's a perfect beautiful. place to video blog. It's beautiful. Yeah. So uh, I forgot to mention uh, that, uh, you know, I am John Pinto, your roving realtor, bon vivant, uh, enthusiast, a video blogger. And if you are looking to buy, sell, exchange any real estate, uh, I'm your Huckleberry. You can call me at 408 829 4141. You can message me on Facebook. You can email me at John Pinto at JV. Pinto.com, and uh, uh, you know the only place to really strategize about everything we were talking about: ADUs, reverse mortgages, uh, 1031 exchanges, installment sales, uh, 100% uh, first-time home buyer, home buyer financing uh, would be over Cabernet Sauvignon at Inglenook. So uh, let me know today when you want to do this. My routine is 1:30 p.m. Uh, in the reproduction of the Luxembourg Garden, which is right in front of us, uh, drinking my library wines, and then 3 o'clock, that's where Myra and I are going to go soon to taste the uh, current vintage uh, 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 Cabernets and Syrahs and Zimbandels and whatever the staff decides to dig out of the caves. That sounds be good awesome. Stuff. That sounds great. So, uh, uh, Myra, a- a- as usual, you know, we were struggling to make conversation. Yeah, I know. It's it, so tough. You know, With we, shy people. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, b- before we end, I-, I wanted to ask you something. You know, when I go to Louisiana, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when I'm in the French Quarter, when I'm in New Orleans, yeah. I feel completely at home. Plus, they sound like they're from Brooklyn. Can you the, explain all yeah, that? Yeah, there's a group of New Orleans, New Orleanians called the, from Chalmette. And they call them the Chalmers. And they sound just like Brooklyn. And I didn't even know that until I was, um, I guess, college age. Because I heard the Chalmers. 
some of them, you know, where's my blank, blank iron? You know, and things <laughs> like that. I was like, blankety blank. We don't say blankety blank. Blankety blank, 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 blank iron. <laughs> Who took my blankety blank iron? And I was like, and I'm like, where are you guys from? You're from New York, right? We're from New Orleans. I was like, okay, got it. So yeah, that that's the group. They're from Chalmette. And they're called the Chalmers. Uh, you know, the National Association of Realtors. By the way, Realtors, the uh, NAR Convention and Expo is going to be in New Orleans. I'm going to be uh, booking my ticket oh, in the next couple of weeks. Oh, those restaurants, huh? Oh, absolutely. Oh, the food. Yeah. By the way, I saw uh, a great documentary. I forget if it was on Netflix or Amazon Prime. Uh, Eileen Brennan, uh, Commanding the Table. Ooh. I if, think I saw that. If you are a restaurateur, if you are in retail, if you have a bar, if you have a winery, check that out. It is so inspirational. That woman had it down. And by the way, uh, the lady that owned uh, Chase. Doki Chase just passed I away. I know, Leah Chase. And that's a funny story, too, because when because my parents moved to California after World War II. Mm-hmm. But obviously, we'd go to Louisiana every year, and I went to college in Louisiana. And But when we were kids and we'd go to New Orleans and see all the relatives, my father and her husband would go out half the night and get in trouble with their wives because so mrs chase and my mom would be pissed would be really oh yeah because daddy and and dookie jr because that was her husband yeah Yeah, they'd go out and but that restaurant was so cool because it had the heavy draperies the burgundy Mm -hmm. drapes i remember as a kid when we'd go there they'd they'd pull out all the food for us and all that because it was my parents kind of homecoming kind of thing so yeah that was something she really lived a long time and was still drinking a scotch at the jazz clubs after the restaurant were closed. And she crossed over. I mean, people oh, of yeah. all ilk oh, came yeah. to that restaurant. Oh, yes. Yeah. Presidents. I mean, there yeah. were all kinds of people who went there. And she was on the Food Network a few times as well. Right. Yeah. Right. So, what can I say? Here we are. Myra, how do you say it? Jolivet. Oh. oh. <laughs> or Jolivet. Well, you, you know, I'm like Gomez, you know. <laughs> and, and Morticia, you know. Oh. <laughs> I love it when you speak French. (laughs) You are so funny. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So anybody, if you need any help on uh, strategic uh, communications, real estate, uh, drinking some Cabernet Sauvignon, you know how to get a hold of us. Oh, and my cousin Anthony Lazaro's calling. I love his mother, my cousin Rita. Oh. That's right. That's right. I see the name there. That's right. Salud. Well, the liberals moving into Cabo Hill. (laughs) Your your mother used to talk about that all the time. That's funny. And, and and Lynn Fall is watching. Lynn, you and Randy are overdue for joining me for some Cabernet Sauvignon at uh, Inglenook. So uh, awesome. please contact me. Hi, Lynn. Me. Hi, well, Anthony. 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 As Anthony. It is in, Anthony. Anthony. Oh, Anthony, got as it. As it is in Brooklyn. Got it. All right. All right. We're having too much fun. We'll see you later. Aviento. Uh,